Shout out to Ella Yellick O'Connor, aka Lord for the goddess of my life. Can I give you a bit of a virtual hug right now? Yes, please. <laughs> give me one. I need one. What an intro. I feel so special. <laughs> Look, I had to had to bring all that all the stops for you for our, our you. finale here. Is this the, um, <laughs> Thank you. The, the sad prince of pop that I'm speaking to? Yeah, it's me. I just have literal depression. <laughs> <laughs> I read that this morning and I'm like, wow. What yeah, thing it's like, to call someone? <laughs> they keep like saying that in interviews. I'm like, oh, I just like literally have diagnosed clinical depression yeah i'd rather you didn't bring it up thanks for that <laughs> yeah it's like oh thanks yeah no i agree completely <laughs> well i mean speaking of checking in on people and their mental health that's what recess is all about we're encouraging people to take a little break from the news and check in on their friends and have a little snack so i guess i wanted to get a little bit of a vibe check on you and see how you're doing right now I'm doing well. I mean, it's, I think I've, I'm doing it as well as you could possibly be doing. Like I could be, I could be sick. I could be like, I could, it could be affecting my friends. So I'm just glad that like me and my friends are safe. And um, I mean, I'm grateful that, that hopefully the situation is getting better and people will not get sick. You know, I'm like perfectly fine with being inside as long as people aren't getting more sick, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, that's the recommended thing to do. So if we can all do that, then hopefully things will start to get a little bit better. Um, I saw that you put this up on your Insta and you asked, um, you said you just need a coffee and a hug. So with your consent, can I give you a bit of a virtual hug right now? Yes, please. <laughs> give me one. I need one. <laughs> Ooh, I hope a... you felt that all the way yeah, from that Australia. Works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> an Australian hug okay well hopefully that's made um you know some people out there feel a little bit better and they felt the good love and vibes that was good <laughs> um when I was when I was promoing you yesterday um on recess I may have just word vomited that I love your skin and it's so clear and beautiful <laughs> <laughs> and Thanks. I have gotten a bit creepy but I just, I just want to know are you gonna drop that that self-care uh, ISO regime for me right it's now. Lo <laughs> it's low key kind of <laughs> fucked right now. My skin is not that happy with me. I thought, you know, they're like, oh, don't touch your face. It, it makes your skin bad when you touch your face. I haven't been touching my face that much during the quarantine because we're not supposed to. My skin's gotten worse. So I think that they're lying to us. I think the I think that dermatologists are lying to us. <laughs> Maybe like touching our face really balances things out. Yeah, maybe it's like it, it fortifies your skin, and like makes it stronger. It's like, I got to deal with the fact that he's always touching my face, you know, like, maybe it's all a lie. And that and maybe they just want us to, <laughs> to stop touching our faces. That way our skin gets bad. And we go back to the dermatologist and they give the, uh, we give them money. Whoa, that's a very I'd intense thinking, theory. And I feel like I'd be it. thinking that's a theory. <laughs> Okay, so, I mean, we don't want to tell people to start touching your face, but if you're going to do it in the privacy of your own home, then maybe <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe y'all should start touching your faces. But after, after, the, after the quarantine. Okay, after the fact. Um, so I want to let all of your fans that are tuning in right now from all around the world, um, we've got the questions box here, so we're going to try and get to a few of those at the end. I know there's going to be a lot, so we'll try... We'll try and get to some, but um, right now I think it's time we dip into the into the lunch box because I'm kind of mm -hmm. peckish. Have you got Deal. a snack prepared? I do. I brought a snack. What have we got here? <laughs> it Can is we get that up bar. right up close to the to the camera? So we've got a Cliff Bar chocolate chip. It's a chocolate okay. chip Cliff Bar Ma makeup guru. Oh my god, the hand right behind. <laughs> um, it's immaculate. No. <laughs> you know what? That's like. It's kind of healthy, right? Cliff bars are good for you. I mean, let's see. Um, <laughs> you know, 21 grams of sugar. Whatever. It's named after this guy's dad. Oh, yeah. shout out to Cliff right now. Cliff, if you're watching, wherever <laughs> you, you are. Well. Cliff, thank you. Okay, so, so here's my snack. 
Ah. Because it's kind of, we're going into Easter. I thought we'd bring back a Kinder Surprise. Now, I heard it a rumor Easter, that in the States, you don't get Kinder Surprises. They're banned. We don't. We don't have those because they're considered a choking hazard and American children just shoot, swallow the little candy in there. I mean, I'm, I oh, totally gosh. would. If I, if I was, you know, a six-year-old child, I'd probably just be like, Ooh, eat that little piece of plastic on the inside so quick. Well, I mean, not to get political, but the legal <laughs> system over there probably. <laughs> <laughs> not to get political. <laughs> okay, so I wanna, I wanna get a little. This is, I guess, it's not mukbang, but like, just really oh. open mm. that bad boy up for you. That looks delicious. Okay, so it is kind of early in the morning, but like that never stopped me eating chocolate before in the no. AM. My roommate, mm. the first thing that she eats every day is a small piece of chocolate. That's living. Yeah, because, like, you can I eat a piece of chocolate right. any time. You know? Isn't that one of the great things when you become an adult? You can just do shit like that? <laughs> yeah. It really doesn't matter. What did you get? Okay, so let's look at... Okay, so we got a, a purple dolphin. Uh. Oh. And honestly, I used to think they were... Oh, there's two dolphins. It's two. It's, it's a family. Is that us right now? Yeah, I think that's us. I'm the little one. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. I, I don't want to say I just came up with new merch, but... <laughs> <laughs> Dual dolphins. <laughs> it's borderline, like, kind of morbid. They're, like, literally glued to each other. <laughs> <laughs> You're, we're never going to leave each other. <laughs> Okay, so we got to chat about school, and I just ha it would be remiss of me not to bring Ew. up. Ew. Ew. So <laughs> gross, old Conan. This is cool, though. How the heck are you doing this? Like sharing your screen. Oh That's amazing. We'll talk about it later. Well, yeah, we can we can catch up after this. But I mean, you're so cute there. Look at you. This is I was prime so time young. Yeah, I must have been like a sophomore, sophomore, or a junior. I don't know. Yeah, this was. Yeah, um, probably like fifteen. You, okay. Yeah, the the middle school versus high school video that you put out. The second one. Oh damn! One? Yeah. So then I was probably like a freshman, freshman or, or freshman or a sophomore. Yeah, I was a baby. Well, I mean, I really didn't have to dig too hard to find out like what you were like at school, but was it kind of cool that you had this? platform this channel to express all these weird things you might have been feeling I mean yeah I think for me it was literally just like a diary I didn't really understand that like people were watching it wasn't me being like ah this is my platform I gotta see what I gotta say you know like literally like I was just chilling <laughs> and I was really bored and I used it as my diary you know, I regret a lot of the things because they're just there forever. And I was so stupid when I was like 12. Are you kidding? When I was 14? Like, what was I saying? Who knows? But yeah, it's cool to look back at it just because I feel like I really grew up with with my fans. Like we grew up together. Yeah, well, I was gonna say like, was it, I guess it's interesting being part of this generation that, you know, there's some fucking awkward years that you're going through and to have an online community like that was it kind of comforting in a way to have these people that may have just been you know in completely different parts of the world but you could connect on some of those similar weird awkward feelings yeah I mean a lot of my friends when I was in high school were online friends you know like friends who lived in Florida or like Singapore like stuff like that which you know, my parents never really understood. They're like, why don't you have, like, real friends? I'm like, they're just my friends. I just, like, it's just we talk through a computer screen. Like, it's not that big of a deal. I think it's, like, I grew up on the internet, so I've never really thought about a life without it, you know? Yeah. Oh, my gosh, that's such a parent thing to be like, the internet friends aren't real friends. It's like, mm -hmm. they are. <laughs> I'm like, they're perfectly, they're humans. I don't know what you want. Like, <laughs> I think they think they're all, like, bots in Russia or something. I'm like, no, 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 yeah. they're real people. <laughs> my mom used to always tell me that, like, everyone on the internet was, like, a 40-year-old, like, scary man who was, like, trying to steal my identity. And I'm like, mom, this is, like, a 15-year-old girl who lives I mean, in Florida I like <laughs> those people are out there but I think kids are kind of savvy and know how to we're like them. so in tune with the internet now yeah 
Oh yeah. Um, I got to give you a huge congratulations. Your debut album, Kid Crow, came out two weeks ago. How's that feel to finally have it out in the world and people listening to it? I mean, it's crazy just to like finally have it, have all these like things that I've wanted to say for so long out. Um, it's it's strange just because I think I kept it secret for so long and now that like all my secrets are out I, it's terrifying um <laughs> but also it's like it happened all in my bedroom um and I'm so used to being in my bedroom so it was a comforting comforting thing to have it out and um there was there was a small moment day one when it first came out I was sitting there at like you know one in the morning after it come out and I was like holy shit Conan like you said way too much people know way too much about you now you are uh -huh. such an idiot why did you say so much and then I was like like people deserve people deserve to hear you know music needs to be real for it to be good so I was like whatever I'll deal with it oh yeah I mean now more than ever as well like you got to be honest and let that shit out so other people can feel like they're connecting to something when they can't do it in real life right now yeah so totally it's a good thing um so I was reading your AMA and you said that there were over 200 songs that didn't make it to this album, which is like, that's a crazy huge number. You ever thinking about maybe doing a deluxe version of Kid Crow and putting some more of those songs? Are you like, no, nah, they're never seeing the light of day. I mean, okay. I wrote like 200 songs, but like out of the, out of the 200, like a hundred of them were literally disgusting like no one needs to hear that <laughs> and then like out of like the hun other hundred like 50 of them were just like not that good of songs like they don't need to be out you know it's like it, it's I, I, I'm happy with what I chose because I chose like the cream of the crap the songs that like really felt like they really stuck with me after writing them so we'll see what we'll see what happens um but with my debut I like really wanted it to be like condensed and small and like say exactly what I want to say you know you did a perfect edit on that, and that's what people need, right? Thanks, yeah. Um, okay, so you also said, um, I mean, we all know that you're a longtime Swifty, um, and I think she's officially become a Coney. <laughs> Coney. <laughs> what I'm gonna well, say. I've never actually heard someone say that. <laughs> no one's ever referenced our fans as Coney's. That's okay, special. well, I just, I came up with it yesterday, and then I remember that, um, that viral Coney thing in 2012. And I was like, wait, maybe. That's probably why. Coney maybe 2012. that's not a good thing. Yeah. But let's yeah, not, I remember. Let's not yeah, when I was in middle say. school and that happened, like everyone was always like, Conan, we're like Coney 2012. Yeah, I remember that. It was so annoying. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe maybe it'll take off. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe <not. laughs> um, but I wanted to ask her, so obviously, she slid into your DM. She's a huge fan of Kid Crow. I mean, it's crazy to ask, like, is there going to be a collab, maybe like an ISO dual bedroom concert? Are we going to get <laughs> something like that? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, she's, it was, it's just like such an honor to have someone that I've looked up to for my whole entire life, basically, like, show any recognition at all that, that, that um, they like the album. And she's just, she's just like one of the best songwriters of our whole entire generation. And so, um, yeah, it's, it was super special and I don't know, I really don't need anything. <laughs> I'm just like, thanks Taylor, like you're incredible. I would love to make music with her, but honestly, I'd also love to just like sit and watch her write, you know, like she's just incredible. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll leave fingers crossed for a little collab there. Um, has any <laughs> anyone else reached out, given you kudos, slid into your DMs, anyone that you've just been like, whoa, pinch me, can't believe that person <laughs> is like a fan? I mean, so many people in the past, like, year have reached out and, and um, it's just bizarre because a lot of them are people that I, like, seriously have, like, you know, stand since I was little. Like, people that I would literally scream their music in the car with my best friend, like, senior year, you know? Um, and, and with all of them, it's just, like, it's just nice to, to have an artist recognize my own art and it's so special. Like, it's just... It's such, it's such a dream for me because it's, you know, I, not that long ago, I was just fanboying, doing my thing. I st I'm still fanboying with everyone, so I don't really mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can, uh, people are calling you, like, the musician of 2020, but I guess it's, like, that doesn't change the fact that you're still, like, what the hell is going on, right? <laughs> yeah, like, in 2018, I was just, like, woohoo, 
what's going on? You know, it's like, I'm just, not that long ago. I was literally just chilling. So <laughs> crazy. Um, so you were about to be playing at Coachella. Um, obviously that's not happening anymore. It's really sad. It must be really disappointing that you've got this album and you can't sort of go and play it to people. Are we going to get a Couchella maybe? <laughs> Well, I keep saying since it's happening in October, well, I was doing an interview and he said, he said Coachella is now Coachella, like winter okay. coats, you know, like, because it's going to be October. Um, what you did then. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. I think personally, I was so nervous to play Coachella. <laughs> so I'm kind of happy that I have like more time to prepare for it now. Um and I, um, we'll see. I mean, I'm always on the internet, so it's really going to be whatever. <laughs> um, okay, so now I'm, I'm leaving the really hard-hitting questions to the end here. So get ready okay. for a question about Animal Crossing. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> are you playing Animal Crossing? Like, are you in? Are you in it deep like everyone else? I wish I could be playing Animal Crossing right now but I literally don't have a, a switch I don't have a switch I was gonna steal one from my friend but he does he is I can't see him anymore because I can't see people so <laughs> um, I'm not playing it I wish I was all my friends are playing it I'm really jealous um yeah sucks all right, I, I have a feeling that you're about to get sent about 15 switches after after dropping. <laughs> yeah, Nintendo, if Can you're you watching, what? your boy needs a switch. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to take some of these questions that are coming through thick and fast now. Ooh, Lucy is a cool kid has dropped about 85 questions, so I got I got to take one of hers. Okay. Um what song are you most proud of? What song am I most proud of? Um, I think from like a, like a pop song brain of mine, I'm so proud of Wish You Were Sober. It's just like a song. First of all, I wrote it so fast. I was like sitting in bed and I was like, my team, but you're acting like it like happened really, really quick and it was super special. Um, and and now every time I listen to him, I'm like, this is just such a fun song. Like, like you know, the album has so many sad songs. And so I'm, I'm proud of that song. And, and from like a lyrical standpoint, I really, really, um, I'm super, I'm just super in love with, with Heather. Um, it just like every time I hear it, even, you know, even though I wrote it, like it, it, it like hits me harder than I expect it to. Well, I don't want to fangirl, but we were listening to both of those songs in the lead up for a bit of a high pop. <laughs> Just <laughs> I'm glad. And I'm gonna drop it. Um, okay, so, all right, this is a good question and, and pretty, you know, topical right now. Is there gonna be a Kid Crow tour at some point? Yeah, I mean, I think for all of us, like the whole world is just kind of like, like who knows when we're gonna be back. And so I feel like right now, more than ever it's just like top priority of the world is like let's not you know get tons of people sick by like going to a show you know um yeah. so we'll tour when when it's safe to tour and when people want to tour and when it's like just the right time you know there's so much more important stuff and i think that um a lot of this next year is going to be us you know sitting in our in our room so i'm going to do everything i can to like um, make Kid Crow special out of our bedrooms in the way that I'm so used to. Okay, well, we'll be we'll be waiting for that. Um, I miss I'm it though. I miss touring so much. Well, I think people miss miss kind of like hearing your music, hearing you play it. So hopefully, you'll be able to get back out soon. Yeah. Um, most difficult song you wrote? Most difficult song. Um, I think the song that was the hardest to like squeak out of my body <laughs> was <laughs> was the cut that always bleeds it like just it just sucks first of all I wrote it while I was super sick and I was like sitting in a hotel room and I was had this like crazy fever and I was so sad I was like so bummed and I just um it just sucked it was like a s shitty situation and and it was painful to write about and also just like painful to deal with and um but I think it's one of my favorites off the album, just because I think it's like the lowest moment in the album where you can like really hear 
my vulnerability, I think it's important to tell the truth. And I guess kind of cathartic to get that out, right? Yeah, it's nice to like admit it as well. You know, I think so much of my life I spend being like, I'm fine, I'm fine, like whatever. Like I'll just like write a mean song about it and move on, you know? But, you know, I'm in reality, I'm just a human who gets very sad. <laughs> Yeah, and like at some point we've all got to deal with that shit that we keep pushing down. So it's gonna come out eventually. Yeah, you just gotta you you can't keep that in. You just gotta like let it out. Oh yeah. All right. Well, I think it's time for the for a game. Ooh. We're gonna bring out the chatterbox. Wow! Look at that animation. Yeah, only the best for you. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the chatterbox here. You know how it works. I'm going to get you to choose a color to start okay. off with. I want to choose blue. B-L-U-E. Hit me with a number. I'll do two. One, two. Another number? Yeah. Uh, eight. Okay. You got yourself a dare. Ooh. Okay, and I'm going to bring it up. You're going to be impressed with this, too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to do a freestyle love poem for Lord. <laughs> freestyle love. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let me think. Okay. Okay, freestyle love poem for Lord. You know, I've written a lot of love po poems for Lord <laughs> in my life, so I'm just going to have to sift through. I'll pick okay. one of them. Okay, I'll pick one. Um. Okay. Ella Yellick O'Connor. <laughs> That's her real name. Ella Yellick O'Connor. Without you, I'd be a goner. <laughs> I'd ask you to marry me, but you're probably scared of me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's beautiful. <laughs> Gonna need that on a t shirt. Oh, it ends it, yeah. That's the school bell. That is the final school bell of the oh, time. No. <laughs> I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a hot minute. What do you want to shout out right now? Shout someone out, promo something. Um, I'm going to give you spotlight. Shout out to Ella Yellick O'Connor, AKA Lord for being goddess of my life. Um, <laughs> shout out to everyone who's watching. Thanks for caring. You can stream my album Kid Crow everywhere. And um, I'll see y'all on the interwebs, kids. Oh Thank gosh. you. Thank you so much for being uh, our Thanks. final Thanks, this was so much guest. fun. It's been so great. I'm going to keep this forever, and it's going to be <laughs> our memory. It's going to live on forever. <laughs> In the demented, like, conjoined dolphin. <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at him go. Amazing. All right, well, oh, stay beautiful. safe and thank you for all the amazing music that you're making right now. It's really, really helping a lot of people. Thank you. I'm glad. Bye. Take care out there. Bye. <laughs>that's truly okay right now things are pretty overwhelming lots of um great great services out there you've got headspace and headspace for all you or you can call lifeline on 13 11 14 lots of people out there who